Alrighty guys, uh, here's my next project, uh, my signing table. The top of the table was what I had left over uh, from when I did the workbench. That uh, solid door that I got from Habitat for Humanity, what was left over, I sat on this little kitchen cabinet type thing and been using it as a sanding station. And it's been okay. I put a uh, exhaust fan in the window. That's why my sanding station is underneath the window. And it uh, it takes some of the dust out. Not very good, but uh, it's kind of a cheap little exhaust fan. Uh, as long as I sand uh, closer to the window, it does better. And of course, that's my belt sander and my Harbor Freight uh, belt disc sander. Uh, the drawers have a lot of uh, just different odds and ends sanding stuff. Uh, here I got paint brushes and putty knives, things like that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to enclose this end and enclose this end. And uh, on this side will be for uh, sanding paper. And on the other side is going to be shelving uh, for my small sanders and stuff like that. But let's go to the computer and I'll give you an idea uh, what it's going to look like. Alrighty, we're at the computer uh, and this is uh, my proposed project. Uh, I have a downdraft table or box up on top. Uh, right here is the original ta uh, tabletop that was already, that's already on it. Uh, the downdraft table I'm still debating on whether to use pegboard, half inch holes, or three quarter inch holes. Uh, there's a lot of discussion online about what's best. The three quarter inch holes would give me less downdraft uh, power, I guess you'd call it. Uh, the, uh, but the advantage of having the three quarter inch holes is you can also use them for dogs, uh, bench dogs. So if you're sanding a large piece and you need to hold it in place, you've got, you've got uh, areas where you can clamp bench dogs and stuff onto the top. So uh, I may try the pegboard first since that's the cheapest and see how it works. And if I feel I'm going to need bench dogs and stuff on it while I'm sanding and stuff like that, then I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, take that pegboard off and uh, put three quarter inch holes in it. In a new, new, I'll make this like an insert so I can take it in and off when I need to. Maybe I'll do both. That's a good idea. I could have one just do the insert and have one with a pegboard and then if I need the bench dogs or something like that I can just pull it out and set the one in for the uh, three-quarter inch. So that's that's an idea. Anyway I do have baffles in it. Let's see if I can get rid of this top. get rid of all these layers there you go and you can see the baffles right here is my uh, port for the vacuum cleaner and I'm going to use uh, probably quarter inch plywood and make these baffles right here so they angle down towards the uh, the dust port uh, the front front of it uh, will have angled let me hide this. These shelves will be angled in here, so when I put uh, put my sanding paper and stuff in there, you'll be able to see it. On the bottom, I'll uh, make probably one straight shelf for like the sanding belts for my Harbor Freight uh, belt sander and stuff like that. And then on this side, uh, I'm going to use shelving pin brackets uh, so I can. Uh, remove the shelves or add shelves or whatever I need to do to adjust the shelving for like my vibrator sander, oscillator sander, uh, and my uh, belt sander. And what else uh, I might pick up between now and then. <laughs> so anyway, that's our plans. Uh, I want to get started on it probably uh, this weekend. I've got uh, a honeydew list first I got to take care of and then uh, I will get back into the garage and uh, See what we can't put together. Uh, we'll see you next time. Alrighty, I'm fixing to work on my sanding station. I've taken it off the little furniture 
uh, cart that I had it sitting on. I'm going to take this base off. So I can zoom in. It's got a indented base there on the bottom. I'm going to take that off and I'll put a piece of three quarter inch plywood to the length of uh, the edge of that uh, top. That way it's all square and I don't have this little old uh, MDF platform on the bottom of it. It'll just be sitting on a flat sheet of plywood with uh, casters. So I'm going to flip it over and take a look at the bottom see what it's going to take to take that bottom off. Okay, what I thought was uh, particle board is actually plywood. This base is made out of regular plywood. Somebody put a rubber strip on the top here, I guess to protect it from water. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, as you can see, that's plywood. So, it looks like it's just going to be four little screws. Right there, it's got mounting blocks. I take those screws out, and that should take it off. And I should be able to use this plywood for something. Make a nice little box for something. Okay, I got the cabinet on its side. I took that door flap off the top of it. Uh, decided to use this three quarter inch plywood. Uh, here I'm gonna uh, cut the dados uh, for the shelving that will uh, hold the sanding paper. There's going to be eight of them. I don't know if I'll use that many, but that's how many I'm putting in there. Uh, that edge clamp I got from Harbor Freight, and it uh, makes real good for a straight edge, so I can get the dados nice and straight. Uh, the length of the dados are going to be about 12 and a half inches, and that's what I'm using that square for, so I can get them approximately the same length uh, all the way down. Uh, the router doesn't really have a depth gauge on it, so I use a piece of tape. Uh, I think the dado is about a quarter inch deep, so I'm using a piece of tape on the router to uh, give me an idea and uh, make sure all the dados have the same depth. So it's a good little router. All right, I got two of them done, and I got uh, six left. Got everything done, got all the slots made, and now I'm fixing to put in the box. Here's, a, here's an update on my uh, sanding station. Uh, I've got my sanding compartments uh, put in, got the shelving and stuff made for that. I've got eight uh, slots, which is more than I'll probably ever use. Uh, I uh, only used maybe three or four different uh, grits of sandpaper, but I went ahead and made eight. The top part here <coughs> is just going to remain open for shelving, for storage. And then on the bottom, I'm going to make actually make a drawer, I think, because I have a lot of odds and ends of sandpaper, you know, like for, the, for that uh, triangle uh, sander. I forgot what the name of them are. I've got a bunch of extra of those things, uh, sanding discs that, that got the loop that stick down to it like Velcro. Anyway, I've got, so I'm going to use a drawer down there just for all the miscellaneous kind of pieces of sandpaper and stuff I have. I also have my uh, vibrator sander in there and then the Sears Craftsman belt sander. I haven't put the drawers in yet. Uh, I just haven't gotten around to doing it yet. Uh, Got the drawers right up there. I just took them out to make it easier to work on. Uh, I do have it on casters. I went to Harbor Freight and uh, bought three inch casters for it and uh, mounted them to the bottom. And uh, the front casters are on the edge. And then the back casters are a little bit different. I mounted them right on the bottom of the cabinet like that and I think that'll be fine. Uh, the back of it I, I changed a little bit because I didn't want the shelving uh, in the front to go all the way back because I'm looking like at, at a 27 inch shelf <clears throat> and I thought well if anything ever got back there I wouldn't be able to reach it. So instead of taking the back part here all the way to the back I put my on this side I think I made it like 18 inches and then put the backboard on it. 
And now on this side, I made it 12 inches, or it's 12 and a half maybe. I don't remember. Uh, that way to the sandpaper. When I put the sandpaper in, it hits the back, and it's right where I can reach it. It's not going to go all the way to the back, and then I've got to fish it out with the needle nose pliers. So that's why I did the back like I did. Uh, the top here is uh, my beginnings of a downdraft table. I've got all the wood cut to height, which is uh, three inches and three quarter, three and a quarter inches. And uh, instead of sheet cutting a whole new sheet of plywood just for this little part right here, I'm going to try my new double pro kit uh, by Wolfcraft. I was at a uh, used woodworker's tool store the other day and found some good deals on stuff. I think I paid like 15 bucks for this double kit. It had everything in it but the dolls and the instructions. I found their website online and downloaded the instructions. It looks pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. But I think I'll go ahead and do a video on it. Uh, do a, like a review and a demo on it. So uh, look look for that on my website I mean on my channel and by the way I hit 100 subscribers uh, the other day so thanks I appreciate your support uh, I know I'm, it's not Steve Ramsey and if he had 100 subscribers he'd probably quit <laughs> but uh, I'm happy you know if I get 100, 100 subscribers that means uh, I got at least a few people that are enjoying my videos but anyway uh, I'll turn the camera back on when I get further in the process of making this downdraft table. Uh, I decided I'm going to use the uh, pegboard for the top and I'm also going to cut a piece of three quarter inch and put uh, three quarter inch holes in it and make them uh, interchangeable. So if I do need to sand something where I need bench dogs, uh, I can just change the top out. So we're going to see how that works. But anyway, I'll shut this off for now and uh, we'll turn it back on and we're going to get a little bit further. All right, there's a box anyway for the downdraft table. Uh, used my Harbor Freight uh, pocket hole jig and did a good job. I made pocket holes, uh, three on the long side. I just saw this. Actually, that pocket hole jig worked pretty good. I'm real happy with it. Uh, I did a video on this pocket hole jig, uh, reviewing it and uh, checking it out. So if uh, you want to check that out on my channel, I also have a uh, video for this pocket hole jig. I took a piece of uh, adapter kit that I had from my shop back and I uh, cut it off on the bandsaw uh, and used it as a bushing for my uh, dust collection. So the, the uh, hose for the vacuum cleaner will go right into here. And uh, I has, what I have to do now is uh, make my V's uh, for the baffles. And then also I did my rabbit grooves right here. I'm sorry uh, I don't have this camera set up very well. Uh, I'm just doing a quick little shot here. But anyway, uh, the uh, the pegboard will fit down inside this little uh, groove. Uh, the seams and stuff on the sides here, I screwed and I glued. But when I mount this to the table, I'm only going to use the pocket hole. Uh, and then I'll take some caulk and run some caulk around the edge uh, to seal it. I really don't want to use glue on the bottom of it in case I need to take it off and redo it or something like that. The caulk I can always take off. Uh, we're going to try that first anyway and see how that works. I'll take some caulk and do the corners and stuff too. So anyway, that's as far as I've gotten. And I'll turn this camera back on when I got something else to show you. Okay, so working on the uh, dome draft table, uh, I made some ribs to go down the side here. 
that the baffle will sit on. I made one, two, three, four, eight of them. Uh, in the intersect right here in the center, they're all the same length, so this is the exact center. And then uh, I've used pocket holes to mount them uh, and got, got them nice and straight. And then my baffles will go in here like this. What I'm going to do, it was real hard to kind of measure these angles and stuff to get these to fit in here nice and tight. So I decided I was going to just make sure that I was close and that my baffles didn't got, go over my dado here because my uh, piece of pegboard has to go into those dado slots. So I wanted to make sure the baffle didn't interfere with the dado slots so this would fit flush on the box. So what I did is what I decided to do is I'm going to push these so the flush up against the edge on both sides, which will leave me about a maybe one eighth to three sixteenths gap here in the center middle. The way to seal, I'm going to seal that is I have what's called bathtub sealer trim, and I've used this stuff before, uh, more mostly in the house, but I thought it would work good to seal this up. What I'll do is take a piece of this, bend it so it's the same angle, and on the back it has just has a stick, sticky stuff like glue. You peel the peel the backing off, and you can just stick it down. So I'll, I'll put these in here like that, and and uh, run that all the way lengthwise. The top, I'll just take some regular caulking and put some caulking in it. I've marked where the ribs are, and I'll take my uh, brad nail gun and tack these baffles to the ribs. And that should give me a good strong support uh, for the inside. But anyway, that's uh, that's how far. Okay, I got some baffles cut to size. I've got my strip of caulk in the middle for it to air, so it'd be airtight. I also ran a bead of caulk around the edges to seal up the edges. Um, my next step will be once the caulk is dry, I don't want to disturb it right now, I don't want to move it around. I'll just put some brad nails, uh, three brad nails in each rib to hold the baffle down. Then I'll trim this end off right here and uh, Put the uh, pegboard on top, and then uh, last piece. Last thing I'll do is put that end on. That way, if I need to make a minor, minute adjustment to this pegboard to make it fit, uh, I have an open end to give me a little bit of play. Uh, so that's the plan, and uh, I'll come back to when you show you the finished product, and we'll check it out. Alrighty, we got her all finished. Uh, 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 made some uh, minor modifications to it, uh, as what I had on SketchUp. Uh, as I was building it, I uh, changed a few things, uh, like the backing and stuff. And that's what I'm going to do. We'll take the camera off the tripod, and uh, I'll give you a tour of it, and then uh, we'll plug it in and try it out. Okay, let's look at the front of it. I made my doors out of the uh, pine. Got my shelving and stuff in there for the uh, different sanders and stuff that I have. I made a couple of extra shelves on the bottom, uh, just laying down there on the bottom. So if I need an extra shelf or something, they're already cut. I don't have to go back and uh, measure and stuff. So I've got two extra shelvings shelves for it if I need them. Uh, the drawers are just uh, 
keeping my miscellaneous stuff inside here. Different putty knives and paintbrushes, stir sticks, stuff like that. On this side, I did the sanding paper. On the top, I've got my belts for the different types of uh, my uh, belt sander and for the uh, Harbor Freight uh, sander. I've got all my sanding paper uh, divided into uh, different uh, grits. Like that's a 60 inch, I mean not 60 inch, <laughs> uh, 60 grit sandpaper going down to the very finer stuff I here, have here on the bottom, which is the 220, 500, 1000, and 1200. So I've got all the same sanding paper divided by uh, uh, grit. And then on, I made a little drawer here on the bottom to put all the miscellaneous stuff. Uh, I've, I've got a drill press type of round sanding kit, I guess you'd call it, and uh, stuff like that. So that's the bottom of it. Uh, the drawers have magnetic uh, stops on them so they stay closed. And then on the back, Walk around to the back here. I put a power strip on the back right here. That way, uh, when I'm using the sanding station, I can just power plug in what I need to here in the back. Uh, but that's that's what it's going to look like, guys. It came together pretty good. Not real happy with the top. Uh, I did place some. Uh, uh, braces across here and long ways uh, to try to kind of firm up this uh, pegboard but uh, I'm not sure it's going to work. Uh, on the side here I kept this unglued. It's just screwed on uh, and the pegboard too. I don't have the pegboard glued in uh, which is probably hurting the efficiency of it just a little bit but I wanted to try it and use it for a while and uh, I may modify this top and go with the, actually a piece of three-quarter inch plywood here on top. I haven't decided yet. Uh, that's why I kind of kept it, kept it to where if I need to I can take it back apart and modify it later. Uh, the vacuum hose goes in here. Uh, and I've used it a couple of times and so far it seems to be working pretty good. But uh, let's go ahead and plug it in. I'll sh shut the camera off here for a second and we'll see how well it works. The okay, first thing we'll do is take the vacuum hose, plug it in. It fits in there real nice. And we'll get out a piece of sanding. Uh, it's called a palm sander. I could never remember the name of it. Let me grab a piece of wood real quick. I can use this one right here. I bought a have a remote for my shop back so when I'm around the shop and I need to work on my equipment and stuff I can just I got that the remote at Ace Hardware. It seems to work pretty good. Uh, it's nice to have around the shop. I can turn that vacuum cleaner on anywhere I need to. Anyway, I'm going to sand down on this piece of block. Uh, I'll do a close up so you can see uh, how it works. I'm not getting uh, very much dust at all on the table. Most of it's falling through. You're going to get a little bit. And then I can also turn those exhaust fans on in the window, uh, which will help uh, get some of the airborne particles uh, exhausted uh, out to the uh, exhaust fan. But uh, I'm happy with it. Actually, doing a pretty good job. Uh, it is picking up a lot of the dust stuff. Not everything, but like I said, this top is not really sealed yet uh, because I may have to uh, modify it and uh, do something different with the top. Uh, I haven't really decided yet. I've been using it for a while. And uh, 
as I use it, I'm hoping I will get some better ideas and uh, do some upgrades on it at a later date. But anyway, that's the end of this video. Uh, my sanitation is done. My next project is going to be the next dance for the antique uh, bedroom set that we have. And uh, we'll get that video going here as soon as I start that project. We'll see you next time.